Hello and welcome to the session of BSH Home Appliances. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our case on consumer centricity today. We are deeply honored on being shortlisted for this award. So let's see how we unlock the power of consumer centricity in the home appliance industry. My name is Sabine. I am Director Corporate Consumer Experience Strategy. And my name is Christian. I'm Director Consumer Experience in Region Europe. So let's get started. Let me first introduce BSH Home Appliances. So we are a truly global company. So we are one of the largest manufacturers of home appliances in the world. And we have a couple of product categories like washing machines, refrigerators, ovens, and also small appliances like vacuum cleaners and uh, automatic coffee machines. And we do have 11 appliance brands in our portfolio. And from our heritage, we are very much focused on uh, products. So we are a typical German engineering company. So we focused on delivering great products, great technology and great innovation, which we obviously still do. But honestly, we also acknowledged and saw that the consumers out there are changing. They are changing their behavior. The expectations are changing also with digitalization. We also understood that we also have to um, embrace the consumer and understand what consumer really needs and bring this into all of our processes. And as you might see from this picture, um, we are really complex. So in the past, everyone was having their own strategies, so product strategies and brand strategies, obviously. But we needed to come to a joint view on what we would like to achieve when it comes to consumer centricity, because at the end, there's one consumer, right? And he or she is expecting uh, the best products and the best services uh, from, from us. So what we did as a start, starting point, we, we really put con the consumers into the core of our corporate strategy. So our mission is to improve the life of consumers at home. But it did not stop, let's say, with a mission statement, but we really also brought uh, consumer-centric KPIs into our business steering. So beforehand, we were steered with turnover and EBIT, which we still are, obviously. But we also said customer satisfaction as a key uh, metric for measuring also our success has been input in, has found input into our strategy. Because what we want to achieve is that the consumers are really in our day, DNA, in everything we are doing, in all the processes with everyone delivering, delivering products, services and communication. So for us, consumer experience is not only a marketing task yeah, or something about content. It's really something that goes across the whole organization. So starting from products, our customer services, of course, how we communicate with our brands, but also, also our HR processes are also affected with uh, really consumer experience and finding the right yeah, colleagues who then can deliver the right experience for our consumers. So coming from the corporate strategy with our mission and with the right metric in place, we also developed a joint uh, strategy for consumer experience, which is um, incorporated into a so-called strategy house, which is basically just saying, okay, we have a joint North Star. We have joined a joint objective that we're all heading towards. And within BSH, we are organized in different business partners, which is our regions, because obviously, also, consumers are different in different markets. So a Chinese consumer is different from an Indian consumer or a German consumer. And of course, we have to, to, to acknowledge this. So what we said is we have a common vision, a common North Star, what we would like to achieve. So really um, yeah, becoming uh, improving quality of life of our consumers at home. And beneath that, we have key results that are being defined by the um, P&L units, which are our, our regions, and they tie this to their business strategies and um, incorporating also then besides customer satisfaction, also um, yeah, consumer relevant metrics like conversions, for instance, to really measure the success towards the joint objectives. And this is then being also deployed to the countries, to local markets, where uh, the consumer experience comes to life. Uh, and we use this framework also to prioritize across functions and to really decide what is it what we would like to achieve, the North Star and the objectives, and how do we measure this 
also in a country um, and how can really yeah, develop the right activities in order to achieve those objectives. So let's have a look at a short film on how we are driving consumer centricity in BSH. This is a journey. As a company, we are on our way towards the most challenging and the most valuable destination, the individual consumer. Understanding the consumer's needs on a personal level is the resource of our future growth. We have already recognized this early on. That's why consumer-oriented processes are already initiated. We changed our ways of working and implemented cross-functional teams. We integrate consumer insights from intensive research, from consumer reviews, customer service, and product test institutes. And we make the most important data visible via the CEJ dashboard. The basis is set and ready. So we are right on to continue our journey from insights to action. The journey of understanding, measuring, and predicting what really matters to the people to create impact for our business. Together, we can do. So as you have seen, um, we are still on a journey towards the individual consumer. And I'm very glad that we do have one joint strategy. In order to bring the organization together, it is also needed that you have one framework. For us, it is the consumer experience journey framework. And everything we do, we center around the consumer. And we start with a key question. Why is the consumer actually interested in our products and wants to buy our products and our services? And as mentioned by Sabine already, a consumer from the outside in perspective, he or she couldn't care less how we are organized. Now, we also took this into account when looking at, into our organizational setup. We decided that consumer journey is the guiding criterion for consumer-centric business steering. And thanks to the joint targets we do have, we bring the organization together and we focus on what truly matters. Now, just handing over a strategy document to the respective departments doesn't do the trick. So it's also about new ways of working. And this is why we have set up new roles, responsibilities and processes in order to set up agile teams which are collaborating along the entire consumer journeys um, in order to really deliver value for our consumers and of course our business. And we also want to measure the success. And here we do have a tool we call Consumer Experience Journey Dashboard where we constantly measure our brand health check but also how satisfied our consumers are while using our products and what we can improve there. And changing a organization towards a truly consumer-centric one may sound easy. It's not. Uh, it's actually a marathon and not a sprint. Actually, it never stops. And our key takeaway is the mindset is the hardest part. And there's uh, the say culture eats strategy for breakfast. So you definitely need to also work on the culture and we are doing that. And in order to also have a facilitation for a consumer centric mindset as said, it's not just about, hey, now let's act consumer centric. It's also about roles, responsibilities and ways of working. And what you see here is a snapshot of one local organization where we have implemented the CEJ and the consumer centric approach already. And what you see is we still have on vertical level um, line functions, of course, uh, and this is needed because if you would say, now let's just work in interdisciplinary teams, um, you would have even more headwind as we, has, as we have today. So to bring the organization together in a horizontal manner is the task of the so-called CEJ teams. So we have established CEJ teams, which are led by uh, CEJ owners who are owning the journey from the very start to the moment of purchase to the end of um, the usage of the appliance and the back to the repurchase again. And this is needed in order to always ensure this outside in view on our consumer 
in order to also ensure a seamless experience. And it really works out. As you can see here, with one case we have brought to you, uh, which we have conducted in Sweden. So here we also started with, with the question, why are our consumers actually buying our products? And since we are a manufacturer of home appliances, uh, many appliances we are manufacturing are ending up in the kitchen. Now, there are also other players out there who would like to sell kitchens, for instance, IKEA. We identified that the majority of Swedish consumers are buying and planning their kitchen at IKEA. How to tackle that as a manufacturer was our question. By understanding the needs of the consumers and also supporting the consumer in the inspiration phase at the very early stage where we usually did not uh, start as a manufacturer, we were able to pull the consumer uh, to our channels and touch points and to convince, convince the consumers with our messaging and our products uh, in order to make them smile every day. And when you look at the numbers, uh, you see it was an extreme success for us. It was a record year. Uh, and we were selling 35% uh, more home appliances than a year ago. I think this is quite a success, isn't it? And we are not stopping there, of course. Um, really acting consumer centric along the journey means that you need to continue the pathway. So when consumers are using the appliances, we also want to make them smile. And we want to understand what are the needs in the usage phase. And therefore you need to also trigger registrations. So here we also um, work, were working on a couple of activities which were extremely successful. So we increased the number of registration rate by 23% and we were collaborating across re the respective departments in order to move on. And we don't stop here as well, right? So we also um, see the need not only to optimize our go-to-market, we also are optimizing our, our products in a consumer-centric way. Because if you really understand the core needs of a consumer, you also understand where you can save money. Because typically as a German engineering company, um, we can just do it and we implement maybe 20 or 30 or 40 or 70 features in a oven. Consumers maybe only need 10. And uh, in order to then also um, foster all this knowledge and to make our product development more efficient and effective, we are uh, conveying all those insights into the product development process. And what I would like to share here with you is that, uh, of course, we are mapping all those uh, needs and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and requirements from the consumers. And we all also are delivering then the right solutions towards our consumers. One example would be predictive maintenance. Maybe this happens also to you. If you just purchased a product and it doesn't necessarily has to be a home appliance, right? You actually would like to prolong the lifetime of this uh, appliance or this product um, as long as you can. And this service helps you to actually do that, right? So technology tells you, hey, something is not really working here. Maybe you should call customer service we need to fix that before it really becomes a huge problem and you need to replace the product. So it's also kind of a sustainability aspect, which is very important these days, right? And again, we are measuring all the success in the consumer journey dashboard. For instance, with the net promoter score in the usage phase. So how satisfied are consumers after the use of the appliances after six years? And this helps us to improve constantly. And what we also see is, it's, as I said this earlier, um, mindset is the hardest part. And I'm really happy to see um, we did an assessment before we have launched this and after. And you also see um, our organization now is truly consumer focused. The organization is flexible and data driven. And what is, makes me most proud is um, they are all striving for relentless improvement. So they are hungry each and every day to improve the quality of life for our consumers at home. So thank you um, for listening to us. I hope you enjoyed the session. We did actually, and let's keep fingers crossed that uh, we and our teams who are working every day on, uh, on a consumer experience 
will be um, yeah awarded. So thank you and bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>